Okay, so let's start. Um, thanks for coming. I'm going to talk about uh, 3D printing, blanks and bump keys. And um, I have to say this is probably the least prepared talk I have ever gave. My work took up all my time, so I did not have much time to prepare for the talk and prepare like super fancy slides, but it's also good for you because it, there will be more demo and more practical stuff uh, and more touching and more bumping is said, which you probably like. Um, so yeah, let's just start with why I started doing this. Uh, the motivation is the Avis TS5000. Um, why this lock? Because it's a lock that has an uh, overlap, like a, uh, an undercut, how you would also call that. It's a very old lock. It's, not, no, it's no longer on the market for years now. It, I think it has been on the market in the 80s, something like that. Um, I like the profile a lot, because the profile is, you, you cannot copy it with easy entry or anything like that. Um, and it's also incredibly hard to pick. It's, it's one of the pick killer profiles, actually. If you stick in your pick there in the wrong way, you can easily break it. And um, yeah, it, it struck me that getting blanks for this lock is so expensive. If you want to get original keys from Avis, you can still get them if you have the card. You can still order that, um, but it costs you like 40 to 50 euros per key. Wow. They charge you. They charge you a lot for that, um, just because it's so old. And um, yeah, I was wondering, couldn't you use uh, 3D printing to get a blank for that? Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, so this is the key. Um, the, the key has like a regular, regular cuts and also has like these um, side drillings where the drilling on one side is passive and the other ones is a mixture of active and passive pins. It's also a nice design which makes this lock I'd say it cannot be bumped. Maybe it can be bumped if you know the combination on, on top there, but even then it's very hard. So I really like that. Um, so what I did is I first created a blank uh, for this one. Actually, I modeled this blank by hand at that time. And then I, I got the blank, and then we cut the combination into the blank with a regular uh, key machine. Uh, and I made the holes with a normal drilling. Uh, machine, nothing special. Uh, and this duplicate actually works, and it's uh, here on the table, and you can try it out later on. So that was the very first thing that I did. Um, then I thought, we should be getting to something more complicated, so I picked this uh, Icon SK6, uh, mainly because the profile is very um, uh, thin, and there are a lot of uh, uh, different elements in that profile. So that should be a little harder than the Ava Smooth profile you see there. And uh, as the second target, uh, this is the key for the, for the icon, nothing special, this six pin cut. Um, and as the second target, I wanted the Avis uh, V14, because this one is also very detailed, um, but it also has uh, this V shape, which makes it, I, I'm not actually sure if the easy entry can recreate this profile. I was told by some people it cannot. Yes, I was, you can. Yeah, I was told by some people you can. If you have a very thick blank, then it will work. Um, nevertheless, there was a time where you could not, um, and they had to change something in order to make this work. So at least this is not easy to copy, and I also like that aspect of the profile. Um, so uh, I started making blanks for these, and while making blanks for these, I also invented some software that could actually do this in a more automated way because I got tired of modeling stuff by hand. And I will show in a few how that looks like. So this, these are the key blanks for both of these, and they are also on the table here. You will be able to try them out later on. Um, and you can see the, the key blanks here fitting into the, the locks. What material did you use? Um, this is a nylon. These are nylon keys. They are ordered from uh, Shapeways. Um, I suspect that home printers would not be able to produce such fine-grained uh, uh, blanks. So Let's for the able. Yeah. So for the for the uh, Avis company, Shape Shape it's a it's a Dutch company actually. And they, they do online three D yeah. modeling. Yeah. You can also there's also I materialize, maybe some know that. Um, because that was used in research before. That's a US company, I think. And um, they basically do the same. You send you send models <coughs> there, you pick your material, they do everything. They also do steel, they also do brass. But do you have can you write the name on the blackboard? Yeah, I, I will do it later on. Um, so, uh, but this is their standard material actually. It's a kind of a nylon material which makes the keys very durable. In comparing to home printing, um, where the material is either PLA or ABS, and these materials are very brittle, 
and they are not very flexible. They will probably break. Yeah. Uh, maybe well, maybe they would. For a regular key, it would probably work. For a bump key, I suspect it would not work as easily. Um, yeah. Right. And it also home printers require a lot of calibration and so on. It's a big hassle. Um, yeah, but I suspect you could get at least the Avis TS5000 uh, blank printed on a home printer. I consider that really doable. Um, so the next step that I took was um, getting two bump keys. Because I was holding this key in my hand now for the, for the icon. I was wondering, well, can, I, can we not make a bump key out of that? Um, just for trying. And uh, we put this on a key, copy, uh, key copying machine and we milled a bump key combination in there, both in a regular key, which you see on top here, and uh, also in some uh, printed versions that I had. And um, I opened the icon a few times, uh, even yesterday once, with the plastic bump keys, and nobody ever managed to do it with the metal bump key. I don't know exactly what's wrong. They come from the same mother key. They should be exactly the same, actually. Um, that's still, we're still trying to figure out what factors might influence that. So if anyone wants to try later on with the metal one um, and wants to try get that open, that would be really nice. Um, but yeah, that, that already raised my suspicion that plastic keys might even work better for some reason that we don't know yet why. Okay, and um, then I picked a new target because I wanted um, to directly print a bump key and I wanted you guys to be able to try out um, bumping yourself. So I wanted to pick an easier lock. So this is the Avis E20, which is the new low-price uh, lock uh, from Avis. Probably supposed to at some point replace the C83. Uh, right now they are sold in parallel. Uh, you can buy them in Germany already. They have six pins. They have drill protection. They have a new profile, which is obviously not a normal profile, but it's also not a protected profile. In fact, you can get blanks from Circa. You can also get metal bump keys for them. They work reliably and well. Um, they are very pick resistant, in my opinion, for the, for the price. Um, but they are totally not bump resistant because for some reason they use very sloppy springs. And they are really easy to bump. And that's one reason why I picked this lock. So everyone, even people that don't have that much experience with bumping can just give it a try. Um, so this is what it looks like also on the table. This is the key. Unfortunately, it's really dark, so you can't see that much. But the, you can see the blank one. And you can also see the bump key. And this is the first bump key that was entirely printed that way. It's not milled anymore. So the first versions were only milled because I got the blanks and I wanted to turn them into bump keys and also because my software couldn't do it yet. Uh, and these are directly printed, much less of a hassle. Because if you put these blanks on key cutting machines, you can cut combinations in there. But the plastic won't just fly away. It will stick to the blank. You have to take a sharp knife and just remove all of the plastic that is sticking there. So that's a bit of... Um, post-processing required if you want to mill that, but it actually works. Uh, okay, so now what we're supposed to... The, the sound, if you, if you bump the plastic keys, is it lo lower in the noise or the same? We can try that out. I would. I didn't notice a big difference, but I guess we will find out very soon if people start hammering around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now we're supposed to have demo time. Uh, okay, so now what I wanted to show you is how you would actually get to that uh, bump key that I showed you, the Avis E20 one. And I wanted to show you that uh, just to make sure that you don't think this, is, this requires like super complex steps. Um, it's actually quite easy um, if you have the proper um, mo software that creates you the model which I wrote. Uh, maybe I will publish that at some point. Um, but extracting the profile from a picture is not really uh, much of a problem. So I will show you this. Just open this one. This is just a picture I took with a regular uh, camera. Nothing special, um, but not a, not a mobile phone camera, of course, um, because that would probably be too low in quality. Let's just open here some. Lock this one. So, what you can do is to go to the tool. Problem is, I have a lower resolution here, so I have to see how I find the toolbox. Where 
it. Sorry? I'm looking for the for the toolbox which is now under the the other one because there is uh, the resolution here is changed it's much lower. Um, I haven't tried it with the resolution you turned on. The top one. Sorry? Can you collapse the top one then? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how that will work. Uh, just give it a try. Hide the docs. Windows, recently, Docker for all. Should be two options. Yeah, there we go. So, um, first thing, of course, is um, you only need this this part. You're not, you don't care about the rest. So, you typically just go and uh, you make a cut here, something like this. And you can make this a little larger. Actually, we should have done this before. So what, what I wanted to show you is, you can. there are dozens of ways to isolate the profile from, uh, from that using uh, imaging. You can go for a smart selection or freehand selection and work your way through, but that's, that's already very complicated. You can go for an easy thresholding thing. Um, if you go like this, you can already see that works quite well. You can already get the profile out of that just by marking everything. You see that this doesn't work well in the area uh, of that first right cut. Uh, you lose uh, some precision there. And that's because of the different lighting uh, when you take the photo. The more consistent the lighting is when you take the photo, the, the easier it will be to extract the profile. Um, just wanted to show you this. Um, to, to give you an idea how long it takes to extract profile from a picture. It's really easy. If you want to get this right now, you wouldn't do this in a single selection, but you would split it just up into multiple selections, like three or four, and do the thresholding on three or four selections so you get the proper cuts. And the more time you invest in this step, of course, the better your results will be. Um, so I, I, I've prepared this um, for, the, for the presentation here, of course. Uh, let's just discard. Um, so this is the one I extracted. Looks almost the same as uh, as what I already showed you with within these ten seconds that it took me now to make the selection plus the five minutes it took me to find the toolbox. Um, so what you do next is it's a really simple step. Uh, just uh, e twenty. You open this in Inkscape. You mark this, and you go for trace bitmap. And this is an important step. This is a Inkscape can create uh, uh, vector graphics out of your uh, bitmaps. So you just trace the bitmap. You hit OK, close this, and it doesn't look any different. But actually, you have two now. This is the bitmap one. Maybe we can even zoom in here and you will be able to see the difference. Yeah. This is the bitmap, this is the vector graphics. Vector graphics looks more smoothened because there are no pixels <coughs> hanging around. This is just vector graphics. And this part, you save, and this is the input to what I wrote. Um, this vector graphics of the profile. Just close this one, and then we'll... Um, just do a quick demo here. I think I already opened a demo here because it took me, it, it takes a while to render these. There's one thing I wanted to show you about uh, when importing this profile. Um, the problem is we took a, a picture of the keyway, but we actually want a blank that fits into the keyway. That means we are missing an important step. We need to thin out our model, otherwise it won't fit in. So you need some kind of tolerance, like 0.1 millimeter or 0.2 millimeters, that you remove from the blank that you have now, in order to make it a blank that fits into the keyway from which you took the photo. And this this thinning step, um, I've been asked multiple times how that is actually done and what it actually is. Some people say scale it, but scaling is not thin, not at all. Scaling just changes all of the proportions and everything. This is not what you want. What you actually want is you want to remove material from the whole blank, and everywhere the same amount of material. And um, that's first important to understand. This one is the one we just made in Inkscape. This one is 0.1 millimeters, 
uh, tolerance, this is 0.2 and this is 0.3, it really gets thin. Um, and um, I've, been also, I've also been asked how, how I do that, because software typically doesn't easily support that. Um, so what I do is I take the negative here and then there's some function, some mathematical function which takes an object that I give it and puts it on every dot here of the, of the negative. And then later on you can convert that to a positive again by intersecting and you get out a smaller key out of that. And as an object I use a circle that has the radius of, uh, double, uh, of the tolerance. Because that dot is put on every spot and that adds material in the negative, makes it uh, thinner, the, the, the blank, and that's how you get your blank. Um, so I, I, I pre-rendered this because rendering this takes like five minutes. Um, because this, this uh, uh, step of adding the dots everywhere is quite expensive. Um, I will now show you um, for the e Avis E20 how the software looks like. And I do this with a tolerance of zero now um, <laughs> because, because it's, uh, it's, it will render more, uh, more fast. Uh, otherwise, we would have to wait like two minutes for the blank to render. There we go. So, so what we just did now is we just imported this trace as an SVG and it outputs this, this key for me. Of course, you need some data. The, f the most important data here is the height of the profile. You need to measure that because your photo doesn't contain any scaling information and you need some scaling information. So you need to carefully, really carefully measure that. You can either try to measure it from the photo um, because if you have some scaling in the photo that you can take, for example, the, 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 weight, of, uh, the weight of the cylinder, um, but that is kind of inaccurate. Also because cameras have some distortion there. So measuring that from the photo is possible but probably not the best idea to do. So I measured it directly from the log, and uh, for the Avis E20, it's 8.65 millimeters. So that is the only scaling information you need for the profile trace to be of the right size. The second information, you, of course, you need is the key length. Um, because keys have different lengths, so you need to know how long it should be, actually. So for the Avis TS5000 and the Avis E20, you can use a key length of 27 millimeters. For the SK6, you need a millimeter more. For the Pfaffenhain, I guess, like 30 millimeters from a key that I have at home. I don't have a key for the Avis uh, V14, so I did not have any sample key to look at. And uh, for the uh, Chinese one, you needed some... Uh, yeah, it was kind of strange. Uh, yeah, and then you, um, then, you get the, then you already have the blank. That's everything you need for the blank. Of course, if you want to have a bump key, then you need additional information. You need information about where are the pins, um, what are the pin heights. Um, and I have this encoded here. I have um, uh, here, not sure how to translate that actually, Anschlag. Um, uh, shoulder? shoulder? Yeah, shoulder. It's the distance from the shoulder to the first pin. Um, and then you have the pin distance, how much distance is there between different pins. Um, you have the highest cut, what is the highest cut. Mm -hmm. And then you have some spacing, what, is the, what different spacings does it support in, in terms of key combination. Um, you can also specify the cut angle. I support more than just 90 degrees cut angle. You can also do the, the, the wide size econ cut angles, for example. Uh, that was kind of a bit of tricky math. It took me like a week or so to get this right. Um, you can specify a plateau spacing that the plateau is, uh, for the cut is made wider, so bump keys work better. Um, yeah, and if you specify here uh, blank false, bump key is true, then it will instead uh, Instead of creating a blank, it will create a bump key. <coughs> like this. And if you don't want a bump key, and you want no blank, then you'll get a key. And this is the combination that is listed here, 534105, oh, and it looks like this. 
So you can actually not only make bump keys with this, if you have the proper information in the software, like spacing and so on and heights, you can create arbitrary keys with that. Just order them that way. Yeah, so this is the program is a lot of math uh, and everything. Um, but actually, as you see, it's not long. It doesn't take that much code to, to, to create something like this. Okay. So, yeah, that's about everything I had to show. Um, I also have uh, some bump keys uh, lying here, two logs for bumping, also two bump hammers, and also all of the samples that you have seen in the presentation. You are allowed to touch them, you are allowed to put them in the logs, as long as you are not using the hammer to put them in the logs. You are not allowed to eat them, because they might be unhealthy. Uh, you are allowed to bump with the Avis logs. I've actually brought five or six different bump, uh, uh, bump keys of the same sort here, so everyone can give it a try. Just do not bump with the size econ one, because I only have this one key, and I used it like 10 times to open now, and every time it took me like 30 strikes to open it, and now it st slowly starts to deform, and I want to preserve it in that state before it entirely breaks apart, uh, just for historical purposes. Thank you.